I listen to your show every single day. Breakfast Club? God damn it. The Breakfast Club. Put that ass up on the Breakfast Club. You can't say Breakfast Club without the Breakfast Club. You're like this rare air. You got platforms and partners all over the place because your demand is so high. People want to be in business with the Breakfast Club. I don't think white people know how popular you guys are. DJ Envy, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the God. You, know, you guys really are like the hip hop early morning, late night talk show. Y'all know what y'all talking about. Good morning, USA. Yo, 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 Jess is on maternity leave. What up, Lauren LaRosa? Good morning, y'all. Charlemagne the God. Peace to the planet. It's Tuesday. Yes, it's Tuesday. What's happening, y'all? How y'all feeling out there, man? We are to a great start this morning. Yes, we are. I feel blessed, black, and highly favored. Why are we off to a great start? I know. I, I know. Everything was working. Oh, you mean? Oh, that's because Red here. Red, Red is back. Yeah, 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 Red don't leave. Red. Red was out Ray, yesterday. Don't leave us. That's all that is. Yeah, Red was out yesterday. Tonight, today's gonna be a, a, a great night tonight. How the debates tonight? Nine o'clock. Yeah. And I mean, it's gonna be. I'm an excited. Entertaining night. Yeah, I'm excited know? to see that. It's gonna be an entertaining night. Uh, I think. It should end up being a, a great night for for the for the vice president. I don't see how she loses this debate against Donald Trump. Man, the last debate we had, like we were in a very different place. Maybe the last are. presidential debate. The last presidential you debate, are. I told yeah. y'all exactly what was gonna happen. I said that debate should not have happened. I said that Joe Biden was gonna get steamrolled. Well I said Joe Biden was gonna get made to look frail and old. old. <laughs> and that's exactly and that, yeah, that's, that's exactly what happened. I think the night is gonna be the uh the, the, the same, yes, but it's gonna be the, know, the vice president making Donald Trump look old because he is, yeah, and looking out of his mind because he is. I love the fact that my kids are so excited. So my kids, are, you know, I have a, I have six kids, but my ten year old and my nine year old are like, Dad, tomorrow can we watch the debate? I'm like, sure, we can all watch it together as a family. Oh, that is so cute. We watched the last one, and the last one, <laughs> oh man, the jokes for kids. My daughter was like, Dad, when is he going to turn his brain on? Talking about Biden, because Biden could get his words out together. Oh and do they, ask you, do, like, do they ask you to explain things? All the time. That's a lot, like for a nine and a ten year All the time. But they talk about it in school now. They talk about it in class now. So they, they do ask to explain. I don't know if I want them talking about that in class. They do. Because I think it's too divisive. I, and I got because in, in the high schools they weren't letting them talk about that, that in high school because it was too divisive. Really? really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What high school? High in 2024? Yeah. Because it's, it's too, like, it's too. It's too divisive, especially between, you know, Democrats and Republicans and, you know, people well, picking sides. They don't, they don't you're go, right, I'm yeah, wrong, no, I'm wrong, you're right. They don't go in depth about that. They just talk about the debates and the policies, what the policies mean. The civics in general. Yes, exactly. Okay. General yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah, not yeah, going to yeah. be like, Trump said this and uh, Kamala Harris said that. They're not going to do that. Yeah, politics and religion. Politics and religion used to be something everybody used to keep to themselves. Like, yes. like what your politics were, or, you know. What your religion was Not in 2024 though Not at all Now mm -hmm. I think social media Changed that a lot Where people go to the polls And they post Who, they po who they're voting for It's been getting very uh, weird Social media has changed a lot A yes. lot of things That uh, don't need to be changed But the one thing That remains on social media Is people don't never know What the hell they talking about And they will get on social media And they will argue And debate things That they don't know nothing about With extreme confidence Oh the yes be crazy All the time All the time can't cite a source for for, for nothing. Nothing. But, hey, that's the time we live in right now. Yesterday was a great example of that, but I'm sure we'll discuss uh oh yeah later on in the show. Mm -hmm. Well, Tim's will be joining us this morning. Man, the great Tim's. Uh, her, her, her album's out. Her album been out though. Born uh, Born in the Wild. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. She was funny. She's from Nigeria. I really yes. Talk, I like talking to her. Y'all y'all know the song uh Free, Free Mind. Yes. I think that's the name of it. Free Mind. She did. You said, do y'all know the song? Yeah, he didn't Everybody know the name of it. He wants to make song. sure he said the name of Everybody right. don't know the song. I think people, a lot of people know the song. He pull the song up right, yeah, right fast. We love, we, love, we love to say everybody with things. Like, you know what people I saw a lot of People don't know this. This song was everywhere absolutely. when it first came out. I think out. a lot of people know it, but, you know, they may not know who the artist is that sings it. We say everybody and we say they. Who is they? People love to say everybody. Like yesterday. Everybody been asking me to talk on this little Wayne Jay Z stuff. Shut up! Nobody asked you to say anything. <laughs> like, what are you talking she's about? She's also on a joint uh, "Wait for You" with Drake and Future. So yes. she, she has uh, she she's out here smashing. She's on tour right now, selling out tour. You got her record. I up? can't believe y'all talking about Tim's like she came out yesterday. I'm not talking about it like she came out yesterday, but uh, to act like everybody knows somebody is ridiculous, Lauren. There's only a few people on this planet that everybody may know. 
Look. That's just the truth. Today, okay. Right? Well, I think she had a huge year when she first came out. People know who she is. Y'all are giving it. I, I'm sure they appreciate the introduction, but and they, and they might not know the name of the song. They might not. They might know the song, we but not know the name. Okay. Well, we got front page news when we come back. Let's play Tim's record for people that don't know. Oh mm-hmm. God! And being this for people that don't know. <laughs> for people that don't know. Hey, Amen. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Get your ass up. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Lauren LaRosa filling in for Jess. And let's Free get mind by Tim. Page News. Tim's will be joining us next hour. You know what that song reminds me of? What's uh, that? Uh, I, I can't pronounce her name. I just met her too. Goapale. Go- closer mm-hmm. closer okay. to my dreams. It's got that same energy. Yeah. You don't know Closer to My uh, Dreams? Uh, no, I don't everybody know that exactly. song. Everybody knows I, that. I don't by, know, the way, I don't know by the way, that by the way, by the way. I would have to hear that one. <laughs> by Maybe the you're way. singing the melody wrong. By the way. <laughs> All right. Well, let's start with some quick sports. Last night, the 49ers beat the Jets 32-19 in Monday Night Football. Wiped their ass with the Jets. Left sure doodle did. stains all over the Jets jerseys. Green, white, and brown. Yeesh. Jesus. All right. Good morning, Morgan. Good morning. Top of the Tuesday, isn't it? Jeez, what did I walk into? What the hell right, was that? What kind of fake Harry Potter Top of the Tuesday. <laughs> Harry Potter. Top of the morning to you. Hi, it's Mom. Tuesday, isn't it? <laughs> All right, y'all. So uh, Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump, yeah, they're prepping for their high-stakes debate. It happens tonight, tonight at 9 p.m. So the event has heightened importance with a new Siena College. New York Times poll showing the race is very, very close. Um, it's likely to be their only debate before Election Day in November as we, you know, have seen in the past that they can't seem to agree on a lot of stuff. But the 90-minute event will take place in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, a swing state that could determine who wins the presidency. So Barry University's professor of political science, Dr. Sean Foreman, he says it's must-see TV, adding VP Harris needs to explain her stance on policies and former President Trump. He needs to show some restraint and some cooth. Let's hear those comments, hear those comments from Professor Sean Foreman. Part of it is the novelty of Kamala Harris. People still don't really know who she is, what she stands for, what she would do if she's elected president. I think what uh, Kamala Harris needs to do is not engage in personal attacks with Donald Trump. She's been pretty good about that so far and not responding to the things that he has said about her. He needs to not make any silly comments that will distract from what he's trying to accomplish. And that is to show the stark contrast between the Biden-Harris administration and what Trump would do. Yeah, I mean, okay. ABC is the host, of course, um, and they will carry it from 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, uh, all, a bunch of networks will also carry it, including the Black Information Network. So we will carry it live at BINnews.com. Go ahead, Shark. I can't wait. You know, uh, tonight is the night. You know, uh, I, I, and I don't see how the vice president loses. Like, you know, like I've been saying, if it's just a straight up regular debate, Kamala washes him because all Trump is going to do is lie and he can't explain a policy to save his life. And if he has a meltdown, which I believe he will, he's going to attempt to overtalk her and insult her. He won't show any restraint he won't show any coof and i believe he's gonna self-destruct right there on that stage and there's nothing he can do to make his base not ride with him but it's the undecideds and the independents and those hypothetical swing voters that's gonna be watching like whoa but do you think, i can't rock with that but do you think people will get a better understanding of kamala harris after this debate because that's what everybody's been saying they yeah. want a better understanding but I, I feel like i think it depends on how she's she... been doing it so much the last couple of weeks of talking about her policies where she stands how she feels about everything from the lgbtq plus to uh uh, small businesses to border control. She's been talking about all I don't that. know if it's a better understanding as much as uh, a lot of people just simply don't know her. Mm-hmm. And that's the reality yeah. of the situation. Well, they know her after this debate because this debate. Yes, because, yeah. because mm-hmm. the last debate, 20 plus million people watched. Huge mm-hmm. stage. Yes. Huge stage. Mm-hmm. So as long as she uses it correctly, and I'm pretty sure she will, especially after what we watched with Biden, mm-hmm. they've been prepping her. She's, she's going. I think this is going to be They was one. prepping Biden too. Well, it's, so a, it's again, a different uh, level don't say of prep. And Vice you... President is a way better debater <laughs> than uh, Joe Biden. Y'all must have never seen the VP debate. But you need, I'm you need speaking. To, uh, okay. Yeah, you need to go back and watch the against Mike Pence. You need to go mm-hmm. back and watch some of her mm-hmm. old debates when she was running for senator. Like, it, she, she gets busy. So again, ABC News, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, the, debate, the debate will not have a live audience, uh, live microphones, and or w- written notes for the candidates. Now, moving on, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, uh, he's touting Vice President Kamala Harris's record in advocating for LGBTQ rights, as you just mentioned, uh, uh, MV. So while Yay! speaking at the rights campaign <laughs> dinner in Washington, D.C., Walz called the Biden-Harris administration the most pro-LGBTQ plus administration in American history. Let's hear those comments from Walz. She helped President Biden 
passed the Landmark Respect for Marriage Act, requiring every state and territory to fully honor same-sex and interracial marriage. And she helped stop the ignorant and Byzantine practice of banning gay and bisexual men from donating blood. From a prosecutor, district attorney, attorney general, U.S. Senator and Vice President. Yes, by the way, she's more qualified than anybody that's ever run for this office. I mean, that's a simple debate, right? Mm-hmm. Republicans want to strip away LGBTQ rights. Uh, Democrats want to uphold LGBTQ rights. This is, yeah. that's, that's a simple, de- simple conversation. Well, we're going to continue to talk about the issues that matter to people in the next hour. Uh, migrants, IVF, 9-11 coming up. So we'll discuss more about it. All right. Well, thank you, Morgan. We'll see you next hour. Mm-hmm. Everybody else, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest, whether you're mad or blessed. So, so you better have the same energy. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Hey, what's good? It's Steve from Queens. Steve from Queens. What's up? Get it off your chest. What part of Queens? Far Rockaway. Okay. What's up? Get it off your chest, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm just talking about this Jay-Z and the Super Bowl thing. Why everybody so mad? Talk to us. Yeah, I understand. Like, everybody getting mad that it's not Lil Wayne. When the last time anybody wants to go to a big Lil Wayne show? You know what I mean? Concert. You know what I mean? Well, Lil Wayne concert sells out, bro. Let's not disrespect the legend Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne concert sells out. It's not... it's not at the standard of Kendrick right now. Kendrick's hot. It's fish, that's fish grease right now. I'm not, I'm not, I, don't dis- I don't disagree with you. When's the last, uh, all I'm saying is we've seen Lil Wayne perform. And Lil Wayne's performance isn't like a Kendrick Lamar's performance. I don't listen. Oh, yeah, listen. I, 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 I think it was a, 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 I know, a sound I'm, I'm business decision. To you. Even I though I am a person who uh, would have loved to see Lil yeah, Wayne. Yeah, I would have loved to see Weezy. I actually wanted to see Lil Wayne, Drake, and Friends. That's what I, you know, that's what we've been saying the last But how we know that Lil Wayne not going to come out with him? That ain't happening. That ain't Why happening. Like, never know. People keep saying that, that but like, how do they even integrate that? Like, what is the what's the throw to Little Wayne? Why, at, first of all, why, why would you? Why would why would uh, Little Wayne come out uh, with a guy who's been calling my number one artist and friend a pedophile? Yeah, he's <laughs> not coming out. And you can't okay. say the whole thing about hotness because when Rihanna did Super Bowl, she wasn't hot. She hasn't released a record in how long? She, she has still ain't released Rihanna, bro. Rihanna is a global icon. So is Little Wayne. So is Little Wayne, brother. Thank you, though. It's just I don't, and, and we gotta stop disrespecting both Lil Wayne and Kendrick. Lil Wayne, by the way, Lil Wayne has sold twice as many records as Kendrick. Do y'all know that? Mm-hmm. Lil Wayne has sold 140 plus million records mm-hmm. worldwide. That's just a fact. Hello, who's this? Josh from Georgia. Good morning. Josh from Georgia. Get it off your chest. I want to get off my chest. These these bar, these out of pocket barbers for the thirty dollars for a little fade in six twenty you know minutes. Funnier? You, you know, know what? You, you I, know I was really thinking that the other day. I was like, when did the prices jump up so crazy? Before COVID, it was like twenty five dollars, and now all of a sudden it's fifty dollars. I laid it here because Bob, awesome. I got myself some clippers. I cop on here now. YouTube girl, how to take my fade and everything. You probably look crazy. I don't have no problem paying my barber. Salute to my barber, Ty. Listen, man, the, the, the thing about barbers, you got to go to a barber that provides you a good experience. You know what I mean? The barber that's going to go in there, put the hot towel on you, put the steam on you, the barbers that go above and beyond, you know? Salute to my guy Marcus in L.A. I ain't got no problem paying my barbers, man. They do, they do good, man. The past couple of years, they got crazy with these prices. I don't even got to be it. Yeah, the prices shot up crazy. I want to keep the show. I want to give you guys a shout-out. Good morning. Now I hope you guys are ready for the, the good day tonight. Can't wait. Let's make the murder great again, and let's make the breakfast club great again. God who, bless you all. Who, Have a great day. Who you voting for, if you don't mind me asking? Donald John Trump, stop playing. Oh, okay. Have a good one, sir. <laughs> have, a good, have a good one. God bless. I thought Get his it name was James. Is John? Josh. Oh, you mean no, Donald I thought he said Donald John Trump. He said Donald J. Trump. I, I don't know what the J stands for now that I think about it. I think he did say John. Is it John? You look oh, up. it is John. It yeah, is John. Donald John Trump, yes. He doesn't give me John. <laughs> he doesn't give me John. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. It gives James. James? Yeah. Get it off your chest. Jamal to me. But Jamal, 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 J
You don't find you don't find yourself funny sometimes. Because I'm all the man I do, bro. But I laugh, come on, man. I laugh yeah. at all my jokes. Oh, me too. I'm hilarious. I'm <laughs> I'm knee slapping funny. Nah, nah, man. I'm glad you said something, Lord. Cause I'm gonna get on you on my second point. Go Dang. ahead. Come Dang. come. Go ahead. Come on. I don't got my lashes on my, yet, so I can take it. My second point is this: Don't you ever in your black life fix your mouth to say a white ironing board backside woman <laughs> is carrying the league on her back. I agree with you. Don't you ever do that. Don't you ever, as long as you black, Lauren. That's crazy. I told you that yesterday. Because I probably I might fix my lips Don't to say that to him. You better not. You better not. Mm. You talk to her. Them jeans That's fall all off I got. them Y'all hips. have a blessed day. And she had the super. She had the end up. She. You should she acknowledge. You should take a deep breath and acknowledge what that man said. Y'all Don't you ever. Act like, as long I, as you black. I'm a Beyonce say fan. Say that you on the shoulders of a white act woman. Like the NFL. That's why the NFL leaning in. They know. Huh? The NFL is leaning. The NFL is leaning into Taylor Swift because they. She's a big ticket NFL for them right now. NFL is not leaning into Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift crazy? is leaning into the NFL. Taylor Swift is the one coming to all the NFL games. The NFL ain't showing up to her concerts. It doesn't matter if they haven't shown up to a concert. <laughs> yes, they are literally. Does. You have. I don't even know all the names of the players, but the ones that are oh big. Oh, my goodness. They're talking about Taylor Swift. They're throwing cameras at Taylor Swift. You don't even know they're big because you don't even know who, who, who I know talking. Patrick Mahomes is big. I know that. He plays for the Kansas City Chiefs. He plays for the team. But, he's, but, he's, but he's a big name. And That's all Travis he talks And they ask him about and Taylor Swift. And he's half white and his, his wife supports MAGA. All I'm saying is, them jeans, them jeans is falling off her hips, but she's at them games and the NFL care. People care. No, we don't. Oh, my goodness. Hello, who's this? Yo, what up, DJ Envy? What's this up? Extra pick for her. What's up, X? Get it off your chest. What's up, uh, Lauren LaRosa? What's up, Charlemagne? Peace, Good morning. Peace. Hey, I just want to get off my chest. It's my wife's birthday this Saturday. I'm excited. You know, she's uh, she's studying to be a Jehovah's Witness, so they don't, they don't celebrate birthdays and stuff like that. Charlemagne, you know. I grew up a Jehovah Witness. My mom is a Jehovah Witness right now. Yeah, my mom is too. So she don't, she said she don't want nothing. She don't want to do nothing, but I'm going to take her out for sure, a good time. And uh, Envy, I need, I need a favor, bro. What you need? Can you play Joy Rap by Mariah Carey for her this morning? Play what? Joy Rap by Mariah Carey. Joy Ride. I thought you said Drill Rap. I was like, damn, Mariah Carey got a song called Drill? No, no, no. <laughs> not Mariah no, Carey no, been in the Bronx. How you sing? Sing it a little bit. How it go? <laughs> Bro, I can't. No, I'm not doing that. That's the only uh, way I could get it because I don't know that song. So yeah, let us know. Joy Ride. I can't. I can't sing it. Just any Mariah Carey. No, no. Nah, nah, well, how does Joy Ride go? Because now, now I'm curious about Joy Ride. Well, you got YouTube, bro. That's why YouTube or TikTok. Or <laughs> <laughs> you know that. We're going to look it up. You ain't going to sing a little bit for us? All right. Hey, no, you... bro. All right. Oh, I thought you were about to sing. No, no, no. Have a good oh, one. No, I'm not singing, bro. Hey, yeah, have a good one. Hey, you know what, dog? I'm going to tell you. What's up? My new book, right? Get Honest or Die Lying, Why Small Talk Sucks. Uh, the cover is based. I, 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 it was an, it's an interpolation of the My Book of Bible stories that we used to read in the Kingdom Hall. Oh, okay, okay. See, I, I, I was on hold for it, but they put me on hold too long, so I had to hang up. Man, send my guy a copy, Hold please, on. Eddie. Get it off your chest, 800-585-1051. Now we got Just With The Mess with Lola La Rosa coming up. Yes, we do. We are uh, going to be sending a rest in peace to James Earl Jones and getting into the Super Bowl conversation again. All right, we'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Larry, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Lauren LaRosa is filling in for Jess. And let's get to Jess with the mess with Lauren LaRosa. Your news is real, weather. Is real. Larry, it's Jessica Robin Moore. Jess don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't nobody. Worldwide Jess, worldwide mess. On the Breakfast Club. She's a culture show. With Lauren, Lauren LaRosa. I'm back. And I got the mess. Talk, talk to me. Man. So yesterday, the Super Bowl argument continued mm -hmm. online, um, and there were some names that got involved, um, including Birdman, Nicki Minaj, Juvenile. Um, I know Kim had also said some things. Fab came out and said some things as well, too. Master P, I seen. Master P. Well, Master P had actually spoke out the very first day mm -hmm. and was saying, like, yo, we need to include Kendrick. Um, so Birdman yesterday uh, tweeted that this is, well, this I'm, a per I'm not going to paraphrase. He tweeted, Hayton, can I say the... Curse word? What the curse word is it? What's thought? What is thought? Word? S. No. S H. No. Okay. He said that he said that this is hating for real. Um, he said I can say yeah, I can say the N word on. Yeah, you can okay. say N-word. These just say N word. Okay, these N words is the female private part. 
And then he added Nicki Minaj. Which Drake. female private party? It's a lot of them nowadays. Come Nicki on Minaj. now, come on, come on. Oh, Don't confuse that. Don't confuse it. We know what you mean. And Keep then going. He, <laughs> yo. And then he added Nicki Minaj, Drake, and Lil Wayne. He said, YMCMB. I'ma make these N words respect with the K. Us on Gladdy. On Gladys, I'm sorry. I'ma make these N words respect us on Gladys. And then he put the GOAT emoji. And then he tweeted again and said, S M F H. Y'all know what that stands for. So then Nicki Minaj. Nicki went in yesterday. Yep, I got all her tweets here. So Nicki Minaj, she said, I love watching the whole industry play dumb time after time. The truth is that no matter who tells it, picking and choosing who y'all accept truth from, then bam, pow, might tell you a joke, but won't tell you a lie. Uh, she said one N-word took a knee, the other N-word took the bag. He gonna get you N-words, and she used the E-R, the hard E-R, in line every effing time. Um, she said, go enjoy the effing money before it's too late. Um, someone said, a, a fan said, that's why I believe her every time when she speaks. She's yet to be proven wrong about anything she says. Then months later, it's Nikki was right. So Nikki responded and said, yep. And I never care about the time that they figure it out. It's good for them. Y'all ready? Y'all know his next move is going to be. Y'all know his next move is going to be to tell y'all a certain someone in parentheses is being treated so unfairly so that y'all can go back into that trance this is all over the place then she said um she got everything in the world or this person has everything in the world she's speaking about a person um still spiteful and evil disgusting be happy a beg go be effing happy in word and rap business and women business when you got the politicians and the police you good though who's she talking about uh, listen i'm gonna keep going um i don't I'm, we're not doing this one um, so then she says, denying a young black man the right to put, <laughs> denying a young black man what he rightfully put into this game for no other reason but your ego, your hatred for Birdman, Drake and Nicki got you punishing Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne, all these exclamation points, the GOAT, question mark, exclamation point, Nola, what's good, Eminem stood firm while having 50 Cent come out. I don't know, y'all. Um, there's a lot more. Um, I'm sh I'm shocked that so many people are uh, running with the Jay Z is hating on Lil Wayne narrative because Jay Z has done nothing but show Wayne the utmost love. Jay Z literally helped this man with his tax debt. I don't know what the actual number was, but you know uh, the USA Today said back in 2018 it was over 14 million in taxes. Jay helped him get out of debt. Jay helped him keep his house. So I don't think that sounds like hate to me on a person. Jay wanted to sign Lil Wayne. Mm -hmm. Nikki, Remember that? Yep. Nikki got me feeling like I'm on hooked on phonics on here. One more, and then we're gonna go to a conversation that you guys actually had in the room with Jay about him wanting to sign Lil Wayne. She said, and by the way, you don't know the half of what Lil Wayne has done for me and others. Wayne had Drake and I on his tour with no papers. He was on all of the mixtape with no paper sign. This man has literally changed the face of hip hop. The hair too, if you know, you know. He inspires so many to tat their faces and get locks. We all know that. Drop on the clues bomb for Lil Wayne. A legend. Inspired your face to want to be a great MC, and he never was in it for the money. He's always been for the love of music. Now, a lot of people are saying, because she never specifically says Jay-Z, but in that tweet, because of the locks and inspired the hair, and you know Jay with the locks right now, people are saying that she is, you know, one of many people who've been trying no, to call out Jay-Z. He's not talking about Jay-Z's hair. He's talking about all these the other whole artists. Yeah, the little, everybody. The, all the artists. It's very, it's very obvious that she's talking about all the all of the industry because she says that. And it's very obvious she's talking about Jay-Z. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, so let's take a listen to when Jay-Z was here on The Breakfast Club talking about wanting to sign or about to sign Lil Wayne. Now you mentioned Lil Wayne. I know that you guys were this close to signing Wayne. What happened with that deal? Because I mean, they got to. I mean, Wayne was damn near saying he was Rockefeller, and then it just went left. The mm -hmm. truth is, I, you know, after I had the, um, I had a meeting with Wayne. You know, I had a relationship with Baby, so I felt it was only right to uh, call him. Mm -hmm. You know, I called them out of respect, like yo. I was talking to Wayne, uh, just letting you know. So after that, I think we received a, a letter at our office for like torturous interference. Whoa. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. Is it sports? Is they do that? It was like, whoa. <laughs> and it just all went from there. That don't sound like hate to me. By the way, it don't sound like hate on either parties then. That sounds like business. Okay, you trying to sign my guy. He might still be signing me. Here's these papers, torturous interference, whatever that is. That just don't sound like hate is all I'm saying. Now let's take a listen to um, Cam yesterday on It Is What It Is giving his take on the Super Bowl situation in the pick. You don't have camera. Yeah, don't have the camera. Uh -huh. Let's go over to Juvie then. Juvie so everybody now. want me to speak on this Super Bowl situation. I'm mad about the situation, just like y'all, man. But my hatred is toward the NFL, not really the people that book the halftime show. I'm mad at the people that hired the. Mother 
because they booked the halftime show. I feel like y'all should step in. Y'all done through 11 Super Bowls in New Orleans, man. Y'all have yet to put a hip-hop artist from New Orleans on the damn Super Bowl. Sure, y'all have put artists on the Super Bowl back in the days. So y'all hurt. Or, you know, I feel like every time y'all come here, y'all should have somebody from our city on the But this time, it really stick hit hard when you don't have Lil Wayne on the show. I don't see how the f Y'all don't have Lil Wayne doing a halftime show. So this goes to you, Roger Goodell. You coming in our city, sucking up our cultures, and making up all this money, and walk and leaving us dry. Listen, I would love to see Lil Wayne and friends, but I mean, you got to ask yourself a real question. Who's better for business? Like, this is the Apple Music halftime show, right? Apple is paying for this. If I'm making a business decision in 2024, and I look at the monster year Kendrick just had, and I'm looking forward to February 2025, maybe Kendrick got an album coming out. Who's going to garner us the most eyeballs? Who's going to garner us the most screams? Who's going to garner us the most social engagement? If I'm just making a straight business decision, just straight business on a corporate level, it's Kendrick. Well, not not only that, and, and, and this is the thing I hate, and people are say we on, on, on Jay-Z's nuts, but my problem is this. Why would people say that? For years, when you look at the Super Bowl performances, right, we've seen Madonna, we've seen... Bruno Mars, we've seen Katy Perry, we've seen Coldplay, we've seen Lady Gaga, we've seen Justin Timberlake, we've seen Maroon 5, we've seen... Then Rock Nation took over. Y'all wouldn't be getting none of these black when Rock artists Nation if took it wasn't over, for Rock Nation. When Rock Nation took over, we seen Jennifer Lopez, Bad Bunny, J Balvin. Then we seen The Weeknd. Then we seen Eminem, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Kendrick, and Mary J. Blige and 50 Cent. Come on now. Then after that, we seen Rihanna. Come on now. Then we seen Usher. Come on now. Now we're, we're talking You're about talking Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar, Lamar, Mr. Unapologetically Black and Kendrick Lamar. And people are upset yo, of, of, you know the, what? of the choice. I can't wait. I want Rock Nation to walk away so y'all get the Beach Boys for the halftime show. That's what y'all want. Beach Boys is crazy. Y'all want Pink Floyd or something like that. That's I would, what I want. would take Taylor Swift over the Beach Boys. And, 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 that's, and, what, that's what y'all going to get. And I'm, not, walk and, away. And, and I'm not one of the people I would have loved to see Little. Don't, don't get it twisted. I would have loved to see Little Wayne, right. Juvie, and Drake, and Nicki right. on that stage. But you can't be mad at, at Rock Nation for changing the halftime show of the Super Bowl. They, like think about it. Like they tinted years, the windows of the halftime I, show. They made it dark for years. I would turn. They made it dark. I would turn it off. <laughs> they added the best. Like I like no disrespect. I didn't want to see all those those cold play. Now we looking guys. forward to it. No. Well, in, in wrapping this up because we got we got to wrap this up. Um, the Cam and Mace audio from it is what it is. Cam talked about. He claimed that recently they, they were uninvited to the Fanatics Fest that happened in New York, and they said that it was because of Jay Z. They're basically saying that Jay Z allegedly is pulling some strings to do things, and this is one of the things that he can do with choosing, uh, not choosing Kendrick over Wayne. I love Cam and uh, uh, Mace on it is what it is. The Fanatics show is full of athletes that y'all done talked about, Cam and Mace that y'all <laughs> that y'all have given up, that y'all have told y'all honest opinions about. I'm sure it would be some of those athletes who would say, "Yo, we don't want Cam and Mace here." Before it was Jay Z. That's just what I would think. And you know who nobody's blaming, but they should? Who? Mm. Drake. Okay? Mm. Drake and Kendrick engaged in a rap battle into the victor goes the spoils. If Drake wins this battle against Kendrick, there's no doubt in my mind that you probably getting Drake, Wayne, and friends at this year's Super Bowl. But guess what? He oh. didn't win. He lost, which yeah. caused Kendrick to have the monster year that he had on top of the amazing career that Kendrick has already had. And boom, Bro. now you got Kendrick at the Super Bowl. Bro, let's really now, think about it. Go argue that. Yo, Dr. They, they, Dre. Don't discuss that. They and in Snoop there Dogg. break dancing. We got to wrap sorry. it up. Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg did Super Bowl halftime. Yes. <laughs> like that is wild. Like, oh, you mean think like, about like, like leave Jay Z alone? Think about, who, that like, think about where they from. <laughs> say, you ain't gotta tell me. Like Snoop. That's why you just got listen, sure. man. Are we, here's the reality. Are we, you know you just gotta let these niggas nag. All right. Okay. Y'all <laughs> acting like the ones on Twitter right now. Y'all won't right. be quiet. You right. You gotta just let them nag. All right. All right. Well, when we come back, we got front page news, and then Thames will be joining us. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake, wake up. Wake up. You're locked into the Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Laura LaRosa is filling in for Jess. Let's get in some front page news. Now, quickly, some quick sports. Last night, the 49ers beat the Jets 32 to 19. Good morning, Morgan. Good morning, good morning. So, Haitian illegal immigrants are draining social services and generally causing chaos. That's what Republican VP hopeful J.D. Vance said on social media. Meanwhile, local officials in Springfield, Ohio, are dismissing rumors about Haitian migrants in the city that have been circulating on social media. Trump running mate J.D. Vance and other high-profile individuals have shared online posts referencing claims that people who are in the area illegally have been abducting and eating pets. Here's YouTuber what? Anthony Hare. <laughs> yeah, I know. 
of course, you got to take it to the extreme, right? So here's YouTuber Anthony Harris with his take at a recent city council meeting. These Haitians are running into trash cans. They're running into buildings. They're running into... Uh, they flipping cars in the middle of the street. It's, it's getting... A, bro, I'm getting thousands of views on, on these. And it's going to get bigger and it's only going to get worse. And y'all sitting up there in these chairs. Y'all, all y'all need to get out here and do something. Y'all making hundreds of thousands of dollars. Y'all need to put on a t-shirt and some Crocs. And then y'all need to come out here in these streets and y'all need to go out here and, uh, I'm out here before the police is. Like, y'all need to do something, bro. Y'all really got to stand on business. Y'all getting paid all this money just to wear a suit and sit in a chair. I don't think, I think it's, I think it's crazy, bro. So the city of Springfield spokesperson Karen Graves says local leaders have gotten no credible reports or specific claims that pets are being harmed, injured or abused. City leaders have requested federal funding to support social services for the thousands of legal legal migrants who have moved into the community in recent years. Um, but they have not re referenced any kind of criminal activity. Of course, this comes as the violence and corruption um, has been on the rise in Haiti following the assassination of their former president, late president uh, Jovenel Moïse in 2021. Well, question, um, Morgan. Who was that young man that just spoke? Like, why is he? he a, why is he a credible uh, source? He was just speaking at a recent city council meeting. He, uh, city Got council you. meeting. He's a YouTuber, Anthony Harris. What he says is that he goes out and he sees and he's capturing a lot of what's happening. Um, I had a difficult time finding his stuff, but uh, yeah, that's he's at the city council meeting, letting his voice be heard. Got you, got you. Yeah. So of course, um, again, um, it is also being reported that um, armed gangs have gained about eighty percent control of the capital in Haiti, Port-au-Prince. So there has been an influx of migrants uh, coming this way. Um, and Ohio seems to be Springfield, Ohio seems to be uh, getting the brunt of that. And thus were those thus those complaints. I'm not sure if you guys have seen those reports, but um, no pets are being harmed. Just making that note. Um, moving on. So Donald Trump is heading to uh, southern Arizona this week after this uh, debate. Uh, following the presidential debate, he is going to speak in Tucson on Thursday, which includes remarks on housing. The speech will be given in the afternoon at the Tucson Music Hall. Uh, meanwhile, former uh, Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley, see, she says she disagrees with former President Trump's proposal to mandate in vitro fertilization treatments to be paid for by the government or private insurers. Now, she made the comments on CBS's Face the Nation. Haley said, although she disagreed with Trump on this particular issue, she still wants to see him get elected. Let's hear more from the former South Carolina governor, Nikki Haley. I don't have to like him or agree with him 100 percent of the time to know that life for Americans would be better under the policies where we have strong immigration, where we have law and order. I don't need to sit there and like someone to decide those policies are better. We want that option to be available to everyone. But the way you do it is you don't mandate coverage. Instead, you go and you make sure that coverage is accessible. So Haley uh, went on to say that Trump's policy platform as a whole would be better for Americans than Harris's proposals. Haley also criticized vice presidential candidate J.D. Vance's recent comments criticizing women without children, saying that kind of messaging by the Republican ticket is not helpful. And that's why I believe Republicans really dropped the ball not making Nikki Haley the nominee. That's like, your you, girl. You, like, do you know how nuts it would have been if Democrats ran Vice President Kamala okay. Harris and Republicans okay, ran Nikki Haley? Mm -hmm. uh, also, Donald Trump dropped the ball by not making Nikki Haley his running mate. If he would have made Nikki his running mate, his campaign would have a, a a whole different feel to it right now and that would be a tough ticket to beat because all those traditional conservatives who don't lean MAGA which would, would, would vote for that ticket and I think she'd be able to get a lot of independence and a, and a lot of undecideds because that uh, that all male ticket right now that's just a uh, screaming of misogyny and you know got people like JD Vance calling women childless cat ladies who who, who, who shouldn't uh, have a say in the future of this country because they don't have no kids that ain't working this ticket tone deaf that ain't Speaking working of the future of this country. Congress is back to work following their summer recess and a possible government shutdown is looming. Current funding for the government runs out on September 30th. A potential shutdown would see federal agencies and national parks close. Public services would also be limited and millions of workers could be furloughed as the November election approaches. A stopgap bill will likely be needed to avoid a shutdown as Congress remains far from reaching 
an agreement on a full year funding bill. So, yeah, we've got a lot of work to do this week, people. All right. That's front page news. Uh, presidential, again, reminder, presidential debate on tonight, ABC News at 9. And if you um, are out and about and you want to listen to it, download that free iHeartRadio app. Listen live on the Black Information Network and BINnews.com. That's your front page news. I'm Morgan Wood. Follow me on social at Morgan Media and make sure you're following the Black Information Network at Black Information Network. Thank you all. Thank you, Morgan. All right. Now, when we come back, Tim's will be joining us. All right. Now, her album Born in a While is out right now. We're going to kick it with Tim's when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Everybody, it's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Jess is on maternity leave, so Lauren is filling in, and we got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. We have Thames. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Hello. How you Hello. feeling? How are Thank you, you for having me. I'm good. Thank you. How is it headlining your, your own tour? It's a beautiful experience, to be very honest. Um, I'm learning so much, but I'm just getting more comfortable on stage. It's almost becoming like a muscle memory at this point, and I'm just really glad I have my team with me. We're like a family, and yeah, it's just been really, really good. You're just getting comfortable on stage. You seem like you got so it. much stage presence. Like yeah. You seem like you just light up the whole building. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but... I feel like it's being refined. Every show is mm-hmm. better and better and better. So, yeah, man. Mm-hmm. What was it like for you on stage in the beginning of all of this? Oh, my goodness. My first show ever, my leg was shaking. <laughs> like, I used to perform with my leg shaking. Like, <laughs> what was it? What was your first show ever, if you remember? Well, it wasn't my personal show, but my first, like, performance ever. Mm-hmm. I was in Lagos. I started in Lagos, mm-hmm. Nigeria. I was there. I was mostly the first two years of my career. Mm-hmm. That was before you found the piece that you cannot buy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the leg, the leg shaking part. <laughs> See, the piece is good, fine. I love that record, by the way. How, how does it feel to create an, an an anthem that to me is like a, a mindfulness anthem? Mm. You know, if you're going through. If you've ever dealt with anxiety, if you ever dealt with depression, when you get those pockets of peace, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I always think of that record when I get those pockets of peace. Mm. How does it feel to create something like that? Well, I remember the day I, I made that song and it just, it was really emotional for me because I was, that was my release and just to see so many people connect to it and dogs apparently. <laughs> dogs? Yeah. Dogs, you know, like I can't believe it. Like it's incredible. Explain the dogs thing to me. I'm lost. So it happened like maybe a few a while, very like a long time ago. But so if you play the beginning, the ooh, apparently that makes some dogs start howling. Oh, yeah. It was a thing on, on social media. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't believe that. I what? was like, what? I didn't believe it yeah. either. Like literally, it was crazy. Did you try it yourself? Like try to mean? make a dog howl? With the song? Like, did you play the song for a dog? <laughs> oh, no. Tim's like, oh, did I? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, did you play the song? No, I need to get a dog. Uh, I don't have a dog. Now, I was going to say, for international artists, you know, a lot of artists want to break into the, the U.S. market, right? Mm. And international artists always talk about how difficult it was. How difficult was it for you to break in over here? I'm not even going to lie. It wasn't... It was something that came from like a burst of just happened so fast before you knew it like my songs are playing here i was like incredibly shocked i can't tell you that i know how that happened did you try it was one of those things like i want to rap home first and it just crossed over on a song no I, I was just doing me and it just like you know as of course essence was a huge part of mm-hmm. that yeah i was just doing me i didn't really have expectations for what was going to come out of that mm-hmm. I saw in an interview you were you were talking about the beginning of everything and you said like you just woke up like you dropped the song you woke up the next day and people like were they knew your name and like they were calling your name and like it happened fast right but when you see moments like John Legend coming out and performing with you and like Winnie Harlow's popping up at the shows like do you ever have a moment on stage where you're like oh wow like okay like what does that feel like to be very honest I have those moments when I see extreme age gaps in my show my show the other day i saw like a really old elderly man he looked like y'all. he was 60 something okay mm. that's not old i said it's y'all he's, they're, he's they're like 60 something. he had long <laughs> he had long gray white hair mm-hmm. and he was singing my song word for word mm-hmm. bar for bar and in that same concert there was a kid that was on her mom's shoulders, shoulders. Mm-hmm. and that is what makes me feel like 
this is insane you know to be able to reach those extremes that's insane to me i think it's the emotion in your music though you know the mm, fact yeah. that you know you're Absolutely. so emotional you're so introspective like people connect with that like people feel what's real yeah and, and you don't seem like the type to front like you know yeah. you're here right now like i don't give i really i don't give <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's interesting, you know. Mm. You just living day by day. That's like, it. You're in the moment. Yeah, you have to. To be honest, like you only have one life. You need to make sure that you're happy. If not, you're just gonna be miserable and famous. Well, how do you avoid being miserable and famous, Tim? Like you personally? How I mm -hmm. avoid that? I curate my environment. Ooh, oh, I love that. Love that. Yeah, I curate it like a playlist. People that come around me, I I have a certain energy that I like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so having the right people around me that are not afraid to tell me off or, you know, be upset with me or tell me no, you know, or mm -hmm. argue with me, you know. Um, and I always just try and like find little experiences everywhere I go. My mom is on tour with me too. I just try and f make the most beautiful scene every single time. Like every single mm -hmm. time. Do you like being famous? Yeah, well... Because, you know, you could just prefer making music, but not necessarily love the fame part of it. There's pros and cons, for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not someone that... I didn't, I didn't take it very well <laughs> when I first... Mm -hmm. When I first started getting known, I did not have a great reaction. I was like, slowly, you know, from I used to record in my room, and then slowly I started noticing people are talking about me all the time. I'm like, but these people don't even know me, you know, that's the first reaction. Mm -hmm. You're like, ah, but you don't even know me, and you feel like, ah, but how can you? And then you go out or you go to the store like a normal person looking homeless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> normal person looking homeless. <laughs> What's been like the wildest thing that you heard about yourself? Probably the pregnant thing. How did that, where did that come from? Future got you pregnant through the phone? Because you didn't, you didn't even meet him at the time, right? Why would you want to get a homeless person pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I have no clue. I don't know. I was just busy minding my business being homeless. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's people seeing me in real life mm -hmm. that spooked me a bit. Like Or oh, being recognized, you mean? Being recognized yeah. outside, like in the airport or in the grocery store. Like, is it you? I'm mm -hmm. like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I So in the beginning, I didn't know what to, I used to deny. I used to deny. <laughs> but now, obviously, mm -hmm. you know. All right, we got more with Tim's when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Laura La Rosa is filling in for Jess. We're still kicking it with Tim's now. There was a rumor that you and Future were having a baby. Did you have to clear that rumor up with family members? Did your family members call you and be like, I heard this? You'd be like, come on now, mom. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like people just take the, the most controversial thing you can think of. Because I was thinking, like, why am I pregnant? For <laughs> why future? Why am I pregnant? <laughs> like, why future? Do you get what I mean? Like, why him? <laughs> why him? Because that's the, that's the craziest. Mm -hmm. Why not, you know, Wiz? Why not Drake? You know, why not somebody else? So you wouldn't mind it if, it, if the rumor was Wiz or Drake? No, it would be the same thing, but okay. it's just like... It's like the extreme. It's like I'm saying... The reason why it's future is because he's the... His reputation. Mm -hmm. It's like the most crazy thing. That but no, it's because of Future's reputation. Future got Future got a lot of kids yeah, here, right? Four or five kids. Yeah, already. and then he's got a reputation of being with a lot of different women. Y'all did being, a song you know, together. So was Drake, though, but... Guy. Mm -hmm. Drake be marrying all, all of his women. Well, he did in the video. Mm. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, that, <laughs> so those are the calls you actually got. Why are you pregnant from Future? Who is Future? What no, is I just go, I just got crazy. No, don't. What accent is that? Huh? Tim's ask him to Shut leave up. you alone. Is the Wakanda? Wakanda. <laughs> <laughs> Do people? He came from the the land of Zamunda. <laughs> Zamunda. <laughs> that's it. That's it. And so I understand. It's okay. <laughs> but do you get that a lot? Like people all of a sudden have an African accent when they talk to you? Oh, so many times. I feel like my accent, especially because I'm not really, I can impersonate accents, but when I'm talking, I'm usually talking Nigerian. So the, I feel like it inspires people to be like, ooh, what are you doing? What's good? Okay, let me try. So I, I understand. Now back to, so back to your family members calling you. Who called and was like, is this true? Did your mom No, call? it wasn't even calling. Oh, they would okay. just send me prayers. 
What? Like you will not be pregnant for no no type of future. No future. <laughs> Jesus name. The reverse of the Sierra Russell Wilson is crazy. That's the reverse prayer. Like, oh man. In Jesus name is crazy. For real. Did, yeah. they, did they want you to be a musician or did they want you to be a doctor? Who, my family? <laughs> what? Okay. My mom, she was very supportive. My family, it's not like they wanted me to be like a doctor, but they just didn't expect me to be a musician, like a singer. Like when I said, oh yeah, I'm quitting my job, I'm going to sing now. Everybody was like, she's on drugs. She's smoking. <laughs> she, <laughs> she's sniffing cocaine. Like, for real. Like, on a serious thing. So, it was just like, this girl is on serious. Mm-hmm. She really? just, she's just lazy. She's just like, so she's now saying she sings, really. When have you ever sung in your life? <laughs> they had never you heard was, you sing before? Um, Not a lot of people knew that I, I really sang like that. How old were you? Like, when you really started to take it serious? When I knew I had something was when I was, like, in uni. When I was, like, 18. And then after uni, I started, like going to trying out different people mm-hmm. looking for people to labels i did their job because you was an economics major right yeah which i've never i don't even know where my degree is to be honest like, hey. me either girl i don't yeah, know i haven't seen it since i graduated you know <laughs> school might be a scam after all but i'm not gonna say that it's not a scam because we need we need the workforce whoa, 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 it's not whoa. a scam it's not a scam nigerians cannot call anybody scammers wow <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. So, Tim's, what I normally do is I sit things next to me. Wow. So, if I have to throw something Maybe at I should him, go. It's time for me to do it. <laughs> oh, my God. You want to throw something? <laughs> feel free to throw any of this at him at any time. Wow. Okay, no, no, HR no, understands. No. It's okay. It's but, okay. Don't worry. But how, but how Strike do you... Strike one. One zero. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. How how now you, I know. I'm ready. How do you, how do you fertilize a dream if, you not, if nobody even knows that's your dream? Like, this is important. Like, you was 18. That's when you decided you wanted to pursue it as a singer, but you didn't tell nobody in your family before. It's that? not that type of, you know, Nigeria is not, it's not common. I mean, it wasn't. Now it is, but back then it wasn't common for you to be a musician. Like mm-hmm. that's not a profession anybody's proud of wow. in Nigeria before. I, you know, I did try to sing in front of my family at some point. Obviously, my cousins they love me. My my age mates. Mm-hmm. But like my aunties, those guys, you know, it's not something that in their mind is like a serious thing. I just didn't feel the need to talk about it, especially when I know what I'm going to get. But that's what's so impressive about it, because, you know, usually you need those adults in your life to give you some encouragement. So Mm. they were discouraging you, but you decided still God put it on your heart to say, no, this is what you should be doing. The way I love music, the way I loved writing and making music, producing, it was more than a hobby. Like, it's just something that I just genuinely enjoyed. I didn't expect ever to make anything from it. I was just like, yeah, I could do this all day, you know, if I can get a job to sustain me. And I'll just be doing this all day. Like, literally, Mm -hmm. that was my mindset. So, I'm used to, in my whole life, I was used to people not really caring. Yeah. And I was okay. I'm still okay with it. What was that first break? That first, like, I can do this and I'm going to do this. So I decided to release my first song and I real I started like getting that's how I met my manager. My t- my two managers actually. I met them Wale, Wale and Muiwa. Mm-hmm. I met them after I dropped my first song. You know, radio started taking I was independent. It's still under it's under Temila Day when It's like I started realizing, oh, God is making a way somehow. Mm. Wow. So I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to go down this road, no matter the mm-hmm. trials. I'm, I'm down. I'm here. I'm but ready. you had to invest in yourself too, because you said you was recording in your room. Yeah. So you was buying studio equipment. And- oh no, you know that. Ooh, free mind. Mm-hmm. The original free mind was mm-hmm. recorded on my laptop. This is the laptop I sang. Ooh, ooh. Wow. I sang, I sang it in my laptop. That's why they thought you was on drugs. You heard that? <laughs> well, I, I understand, actually. I'm not even, like, I get it. I'm not even judging them. Is that why you're able to do so much? Because you engineer too, right? Yes. Well, you were at one I point do. engineering yourself or now. But is that why you're so, like, hands-on where it's like if you can't figure out a sound or someone else can't, you'll just figure it out yourself because you started that way? Yeah, you know, it's not a good thing. I always want to do everything myself. I'm like, uh It is good, though. It's you, not you know how to do everything. Is. You know how you like your sound. Trust me, because this album, 
I engineered myself. I recorded myself mm -hmm. and I engineered myself. The Born in the Wild? Born in the Wild. I comped all my vocals. I know, that's mm -hmm. right. Wow. Girl. You better go, girl. I, wow. I, I started getting help towards the end. Like, after, like, I was literally about to die on the line. <laughs> I now was like, okay, I actually need help. Like, I But can't. I bet you went back and you checked everything that person recorded. I didn't. No? You were burnt out? I was burnt the hell out so how'd you do the first project it was less songs i wasn't doing as much mm -hmm. i wasn't as big mm -hmm. as i am now bro it's not good to do things by yourself there's a time where you now have to get help let go yeah i was gonna say do you feel like you have to one of the people that have to carry the torch because at one time afro beats was so big right mm. the genre was so big i mean it was huge it, see it feels like it slowed down a little bit really mm -hmm. i think i think so after me I feel like it's bigger than ever. No, I, I think it's slowed down, especially in the States. I feel like it's slowed mm. down. Do you feel like you have to carry that torch and make sure it continues on? Because I, I feel like it has been a, a little bit of a slowdown. And maybe you don't feel that way. Do you believe it's a slowdown? I think it's more of a settling. Like, we, like I think it's just the shock value of it here isn't as much it's, anymore. It's mm. like, for me, it's now. like how Hispanic, there was like a boom. And I feel like it's still big, but it's settled in what it is mm -hmm. i think that's the same with afrobeats there's always like when the world discovers a new sound mm -hmm. and then it settles in what it is mm -hmm. all right we got more with tim's when we come back it's the breakfast club good morning good morning everybody we are the breakfast club we're still kicking it with tim's lauren when it comes to um the afrobeats in the reggae conversation i know there's been like a back and forth about that um mm -hmm. from just different conversations about like uh, you talked about escapism when it comes to that. Mm. Can you explain a bit about like when you said that you know it is it is escapism like that's the purpose of Afrobeats. What does that mean? Mm. Before I answer your question, I want to just say that this is the reason why sometimes artists don't answer questions in interviews mm. because they take it. They carries over mm -hmm. because now. I don't even know what I said in that interview. <laughs> I don't I want have, to contradict I have myself. a quote for you. You want me to No, no, don't read it. She said, no, no, no. <laughs> I heard, got you, got you. Okay, all right. All right. <laughs> okay, got you. Just repeat the question again, sir. So, what, what is escapism when it comes to Afrobeats? Like, what does that mean? Well, Afrobeats right now, every artist talks about their life and what means the most to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, it can be introspective. It can be just about how you know what's going on in the country it can be about you know how they're living their life it just depends on the artist but the structure of Afrobeats is for dancing it's, it's supposed to be groovy danceable music absolutely especially when Nigerians I love that music because it's just like a forget about everything that is you're worried about and right. just enjoy life that's what Afrobeats I think is, people need to experience that too. You know, I love and, and it. yeah, me too. Yeah, if you're going and trying to sing, uh, oh, the government is, so, you know, if you don't sing it in a groovy way, nothing for you. And even if you do, like Nigerians don't want to be reminded of their own hardship, right. mm. you know. Mm -hmm. So they want things that are elevating. Like I'm gonna make it. Like I'm mm -hmm. going to be great. I'm going to do great things because I am great. I'm. I'm gonna enjoy my life because this is life, you know, things like that. That's, That's the one thing I would say. Like anytime I travel to whether I DJ in Nigeria or South Africa, Johannesburg, wherever it may be, that's one thing I can say about the music is no matter how bad somebody's day is in the it club that good. night, it just feels good. Yeah, Everybody's exactly. dancing, they're drinking, and it's a good time. That's what made me even start loving Afrobeats way back is because it's just a, a feel. Yeah. And when it came here, that feeling hit so hard, it was just like, this is good. Mm -hmm. Charlamagne thought at one time it was going to replace hip hop, but it just felt uh, so good. Really? I just I still think it might in the long run, maybe. I mean, I I mean hip hop is so. just such a huge, huge, huge culture, of course, but I'm just talking about musically, globally around the world. Mm -hmm. I feel mm -hmm. like a lot of people are embracing Afrobeats because it does feel very good and some of the stuff some of the stuff that's coming from here is so low vibrational mm. that you know I can I can turn Afrobeats on and everything's not Afrobeats there's other names for it too I can just turn it on at the house yep. while my four daughters is running around mm. and not think nothing of it mm. and not know the artist but it just feels good through that whole time absolutely mm. yeah I, I always just say like music different genres are for different purposes you know 
I, you listen to Afrobeats, but I'm sure you still listen to R and B. Of course, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure you're not gonna like be like, oh yeah, R and B is dead. Mm-hmm. No, mm-hmm. you know, there's different moods, mm-hmm. different times. There's a time that you might feel like you want to play reggae and feel that vibe. It's just for different. It's for different purposes. Did you see uh, Buju Bantan on Drink Champs? And he criticized Afrobeats. He said a shallow and unsub- unsubstantial mm-hmm. music that lacks content aimed at liberating africa yeah so that's exactly what i just said like mm-hmm. reggae is not afrobeats mm-hmm. afrobeats is not r&b it's not rock you know reggae is for a certain purpose mm-hmm. afrobeats thinking about the origin which is nigeria is for a certain purpose it's for the nigerian people now if you like Ni- afrobeats from the outside you can join us in the enjoyment of it but afrobeats was tailored for nigerian people originally mm. do you understand it uplifts the nigerian people mm-hmm. do you understand so th- if i'm looking for something in reggae i cannot expect to find the same thing in afrobeats because it's not tailored for the same people i know you're into um you're, you're into rap like you got a lot different like mm-hmm. T-Unit on here is inspired by 50 mm-hmm, mm-hmm. who are some of the other artists like rap artists that like inspire you in like oh. your sound Lil Wayne Kendrick Drake Absol Andre 3000 it's a great list mm-hmm. yeah can you like Lil Kendrick? Wayne is the most though Are you, you've always been a big Lil Wayne fan oh yeah did you I, want to rap at first I was introduced to rap so early by my brother mm-hmm. so it was Lil Wayne that I heard first I heard um Make It Rain the remix Mm -hmm. and it was his uh, verse that stood out to me a lot I make it rain I'm like yeah I know you got in trouble I know your parents heard that (laughs) Uh, my mom she didn't really (laughs) she didn't know what she was just like oh they're just doing their their children things (laughs) she did not know what was going on Mm -hmm. but um, after that all of Lil Mint's Albums, I listen to it religiously. J. Cole? J. Cole. He's on the album. How can I forget? Mm -hmm. Free Fall. Are you like all the But J. Cole, I I started listening to J. Cole much later in my years. Oh, you know what I did want to ask you about? I saw it a long time ago. It wasn't that long ago, but you said that you wear baggy clothes in the studio. Oh. So that producers (laughs) aren't distracted by your by your body. I used to, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I didn't know it was a thing, but you know, it's only when you do something in ignorance that you find out. So obviously, mm-hmm. I was my normal self, and I realized people's reactions to me, especially when I was I was like seventeen, eighteen, when I was like going around studios. So I started noticing, like, oh, every time I come here, people don't take me seriously. <laughs> okay. Oh, what is this? Why, why is this a thing? Like, why, why you've seen many women before? Why is this such a huge deal? Mm-hmm. Right. Just another woman. And then I just realized, okay, if there's nothing, f- they, if they can't see anything, then they have nothing to talk about or think about. They can only focus on your talent. Yeah, but you know that also doesn't work as well these days. But then it did. To to be honest, it did. It really did. Mm-hmm. How do you feel now when people like when you do dress like because you dressed in baggier clothes today? But like when you dress up and it's tighter or whatever, and people react to your shape and stuff like that, does it bother you? No, at all. Not at all. I don't even. I don't even notice it. To unless they're telling me directly, like, "Oh, you're beautiful," or "You look good." I'm not even. I don't notice it. Like, I just think people are happy to see me. Right. If they're happy to see me because of my body, it's, I don't know. I don't care. I'm just like, okay. Well, we appreciate you for joining us. We do appreciate Hopefully you. Hopefully you'll come back. Yes, I will if if he doesn't have any more shots to throw me. <laughs> or maybe I'll go, I'll, I'll go and get my own shots. <laughs> okay. What do you mean? We on the same wavelength. I'm right here with you. Okay. I'm going to go to Nigeria. I'm going to bring all cash, no credit card. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Tim's. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's get to Jess with the mess with Lauren LaRusso. The news is real. Oh, Lauren's Jessica Robin Moore. Jess don't do no lies. Unbelievable. She don't spare nobody. Worldwide Jess. Worldwide mess. On the Breakfast Club. She's a coach of shoes. With Lauren. Lauren LaRusso. I'm back. And I got the mess. Talk to me.
Sending a rest in peace to James Earl Jones, who passed away uh, Monday at age 93. Uh, this was uh, announced uh, by one of his representatives that he passed away at his home in upstate New York, surrounded mm-hmm. by family. Um, you guys, I mean, James Earl Jones, we were talking about earlier, heard everybody be like, everybody knows that. This is a voice. This is a face that everybody, everybody knows, that knows. That is a fact. They, yes, they, they they know because, of, because of Darth Vader. That I is think, a fact. I think different people know Darth, for different Darth reasons. Darth Vader and Mufasa. Yeah, I was yes. about to say because Mufasa and, and, and for there, me. There's not a Darth Vader and Mufasa got him. 100 yes. percent easily. Yes. And a lot of people don't know that he for a long time was the this is CNN when you hear CNN and it's like this. I is seen CNN. that yesterday. A this lot of people CNN. didn't know yeah. that. I saw people reacting to that on Twitter, but um, yeah. So he passed away at age 93. Um, just legendary. He was, you know, one of few EGOT winners, which means you have a Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and a Tony. Yep. Um, his career spanned because of that. His career spanned across television, stage performances, film. Mm-hmm. Um, but we do have some of his iconic uh, clips let's or see, sounds. Let's, let's take a, let's take a listen to him um, in Star Wars as Darth Vader. I am your father. I am your father. I've never watched a Star Wars movie in my life, but I know James Earl Jones was Same. the voice of Darth Vader. Nah. Same. That's no. different. Yeah, I watched Star Wars. I never watched Star Trek. I, I watched Star Trek. I never watched Star I Trek. I watch either. Watch Star and then um, let's let's listen to him in Mufasa. I mean, in Lion King as Mufasa. A king's time as ruler rises and falls like the sun. One day, Simba, the sun will set on my time here, and will rise with you as the new king. Mm. That just feels like a hug. Those days of like the original Lion King is like when everything was so simple in my life. It don't matter what your race is, your ethnicity mm-hmm. is, your 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 sexual identity, your, mm-hmm. where you like to put your penis. You know Mufasa, <laughs> you know Darth that Vader. <laughs> you know you yes. know Mufasa and Darth Vader. What about my favorite one? Oh, uh, coming to America. Let's ah, that. so you want to sow your royal oats? No, it's not that. It's just- You're right. Get out, see the world, enjoy yourself, fulfill every erotic desire, and in 40 days, you will come back and marry your money. Oh, that was your favorite. Go ahead. Come to America is my favorite movie. Do your favorite. Do, do your so, so the Royal Oats dance you just did. Nope. Do it That's again. not my favorite line from that so movie. So the Royal he, Oats? You really like, get what? to hear his voice when he says, my son works. My son yeah. works. My son works. Yeah, so uh, rest in peace to him. Like yeah. he, he's literally like uh, all of our lives. Um, for ninety three years time. old, ninety three, yeah. a beautiful, long, amazing life, man. Drop on yes. the cruise bombs for James. So yesterday, um, remember I told you guys that uh, we had been told um, by the director of the Miami Poli- Miami Dade Police Department that they were going to be releasing the body cam of Tyreek Hill's arrest. Yep. So they did it yesterday. Um, in a statement, they said, "In our commitment to transparency and maintaining public trust, we are uh, releasing a body worn camera." They made it clear that normally they do this after the investigation is complete, when they do have to investigate into different arrests and things of that nature, detaining because he was detained, not arrested. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can't this, tell. But damn. This, but this time they did it prior to. So this is a hundred and five minutes total, thirty three seconds. We not gonna listen to all of that. But they released this the day following the incident because they want to reinforce that this department is committed to keeping the public informed. So mm-hmm. let's take a listen to the Tyreek Hill body cam. Don't knock on my window. Like that. Don't knock on Why my don't you window. have your seatbelt on? Don't knock on my window. Why like don't you have your seatbelt on? Don't knock on my window. Like Why that. you have it up? Just get my ticket, bro, so I can go. I'm gonna be late, gang. Do what you gotta do. Hey, keep your window down. Keep your window down. Keep your window down. I'm gonna get you out of the car. As a matter of fact, get out of the car. Get out of the car. Give me that. Break that window. Get out of the car. We're not playing this game. Get out. Get out. What part of the do you understand? Hey, Drew. Hey, Drew. I'm getting arrested, Drew. I'm getting out, bro. God damn, twin. When we tell you to do something, you do it. I'm getting out. You understand? I'm getting out. You understand? Not for you, but for what we tell you. I'm getting out. Confused. I'm getting out, bro. Too late. Too late. Hold on, bro. I just had surgery on my knee. I just had surgery on my knee, bro. I just had surgery really? on my knee, bro. I just had surgery in your ears when we got oh, with the bro. Man. That was sickening. Yeah, there was a whole lot of... Uh, uh, ego. Yes, ego's being thrown in that video. So when I first Abuse saw this power. video, I was like, why the... Why would he even roll his window down and be like, why y'all, why y'all knocking on my window like that? And then I was like, but I mean, they came up so aggressive, a human would respond and be like, yo, what's going on, y'all? That was right? abusive power. You know, it took them one minute, one minute from getting out of their car, pulling him over, pulling him over, getting out of their car, and getting him car. 
It took well, the bike, whatever. It mm-hmm. took them one minute to do all of that. Yo, one minute. But they, I, I feel like the way that they approached it is what made his response be the way that it was. And uh, this, I don't know. I don't care what his he, response was. He put the window. So he puts the, in this video. He puts the window back up. When he puts the window back up, um, first he like doesn't put it up fully, and then he puts it up fully, but he puts his seatbelt on. So that aggravates the police even more. And they that's when they open the car door and they throw him to the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's on the phone with his agent, basically telling him like, "Yo, Drew, I'm getting locked up." And then you hear, I mean, and, and there's a there's another angle of the body cam where his uh, other player. So I don't, I'm going to say the name wrong. One of the other players, um, there's like three people that pull up, but one of the other players gets out and tries to walk up, and the police are getting crazy on him. They yelling at him like, we'll arrest you. Let's take a listen. Hey, man, they got Tyreek. Hey. The cops over here beating on him, man. They over here beating on Tyreek, man. man. Just get in hey, the yo, car. Hey, you got to come, man. Hey, get in the car. You're parked at the middle of the street. Who's the driver? This is my car. All right, move. I'll take the you got to move coming, right now. Coming, Let me have your license. You're going to have to get to. I'm coming. Let me have your license. You're going to have to. Let me have your license. I'm leaving. I'm not playing. Let me have your license. I'm leaving. Yo, what's your going license on? Right your license right now. What's going on, Your license right now. You're not going to give me your license? Hey, 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 so, you're not going to give me your license? I'm leaving. Let me have your license. Your license right now. So, and mind you, these are just like, at, at this point, the police don't know... They knew who Tyreek was, was because they the said it in the audio. Say, yeah. One of the officers yeah, so said, then you see all these other nice cars Tyreek pull up. So I'm, I'm assuming that you know who these people are, but like they're sc- screaming at them, like they're not just trying to make sure that he's safe while all this is happening. Correct. I think it's really sad that people that the conversation can even be had of like he should have did this, he should have not done this, because it's like at the end of the day they had no reason to. All he did was pull over. They had no reason to approach yeah, this, as aggravated and, and annoyed as they were. And this is the thing: people would say he's uncooperative because he didn't roll down the window. That's BS. The way that those cops handled that situation shows abuse of power. Like, and everybody knows my father's a retired police officer, so we talk about this all the time. The way that they handled that individual, like he wasn't a human being. They talked to him like like he was a peon. We gonna throw you on the floor. Or get out the effing car. He said, I had surgery on my knee. They said, you're going to need surgery on your, your ears. ears. So it's like, if you talking to a person like that, how you think they're going to respond? And then... It was abuse of power. Yeah. It's crazy that y'all sound surprised. I'm not surprised. I, just, I am surprised. I'm not surprised you're at all. You're a block away from where you play and, and, and the, the amount of stuff that you do for the city of Miami and how you help and you give back. And I probably guarantee, probably that stadium probably pays a lot of those officers to make sure when they, when it's game days to make sure that it, it's safe out there. So, yeah, I am surprised when it comes to that. And they knew who he was. They said Tyreek Hill as soon as they pulled him over. So they knew who he was. But throwing that man on the floor after they he They said Tyreek Hill as soon as they yes, pulled they him did. over? Mm-hmm. One of the officers said that's Tyreek Hill. We got the audio of that. You got the audio of that? Yeah, you can barely hear it, but it's it's in you the audio that we just listened to. Mm-hmm, you can hear it. Um, but I, I, it is being reported that the uh, one the officer that was placed on administrative duties has lawyered up um, he in, in this situation he as just well. Just nasty and disrespectful. He right. He about to get let go. He, he was just nasty and disrespectful. And when you talk about abuse of power, that was abuse of power. Yeah, I mean, and Tyreek Hill has like attorneys that. too, and and they've uh, you know it's been reported that they've had that they're having conversations about exploring any legal remedies and if, that are necessary. And let's be honest, if he didn't want to be detained. You wouldn't detain Tyreek Hill. You're not going to detain him. He was not uh, not trying to be detained and not trying to be pulled out because if he, he did not want to, them over. he could have flipped had... all five of them over, knocked them all over, spun them all around well, that if he be, wanted to. That would be dumb. Right. Because they all have guns. Of course. Well, that goes to my point when you said, I don't care what he did. That's what I was trying to say about him putting the window up because I was scared when I saw him put the window well, up. Probably, I literally, my heart dropped. He probably like, put the window up because he was outside uh, and he didn't want people taking pictures of him being, you know, pulled over. That's probably why he a, pulled the window over. He, the, he actually said that, yes. See? Yeah, I mean, but I'm just saying I was scared for him because police just react. They don't think like that. They just react. And these police pulled over reacting, so. Just disgusting. So, nasty. yeah, so we'll be following this as um it develops and, Yeah. Sad world we live in, but that's our reality, right, y'all? All right. Well, that was just with the mess with Lauren LaRosa. Charlamagne? Why you yeah. look so calm over there? Who you give me a donkey? I'm always calm. No, um, you are not. Donkey of the day is going to those Miami Dade police officers who pulled over Tyreek Hill. They need to come to the front of the congregation. We would like to have a word with them, even though their names have not been released. Of course not. I don't know why we're acting like we're surprised about any of this, but we'll discuss. And then we'll open up the phone lines to discuss it. 800 585 1051. What are your thoughts? What do you think? When you seen that yesterday, we'd love to hear from some officers as well, too. Call us up. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hold on. Every day I wake up. Uh, wake your ass up. The Breakfast Club on Power 105.1. Your execution on the donkey of the day is something to behold. Is it a read? 
gave me donkey of the day and I deserve it. People need to know. Well, need... you need to tell them. I am. you have the voice. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. It's time for donkey of the day. It's a read, <laughs> but you're so good at it. You're trying to be a fake-ass Charlemagne. There's only one Charlemagne to God. Damn, Charlemagne. Charlemagne. Who you give a donkey of the day to now? Well, Sexy Red, donkey of the day for Tuesday, September 10th goes to the Miami-Dade police officers who pulled over Miami Dolphin uh, Tyreek Hill. Salute to Tyreek Hill. Uh, on Sunday, as he was approaching the Hard Rock Stadium to play a game against the Jacksonville Jaguars, he got pulled over. Now, I don't know if you have all seen the body cam footage, but the Miami-Dade police officers pulled Tyreek Hill out of his car and forced him to the pavement before putting him in handcuffs. Now, I'm going to get to the news report, but I want to explain what you may hear. The footage shows Tyreek is originally pulled over for speeding, and it takes approximately one one minute from when the officer leaves his motorcycle and starts walking towards Tyreek's car to when Tyreek is forcibly pulled out. One minute, 60 seconds. Okay, the officers arrived. They knocked on Tyreek's car window. Tyreek rolls the window down, hands the officer his driver's license, and tells the officer over and over to not knock on my window. The footage also shows the officers asking Tyreek to keep his window down, and that's when the escalation escalated. Who's the source? What's the source? What's CNN. The source? CNN. Let's go to CNN for the report, please. Why don't you have your seatbelt on? Don't knock on my window. Why don't you have your seatbelt on? Don't knock on my window like that, though. Like what? Don't knock on my window like that. Why you have it up? Don't knock on my window like that. Why you have it up? I have to knock to let you know I'm here. That way you can lower it and talk to you. Give me my ticket, bro, so I can go. I'm gonna be late, gang. Do what you gotta do. Hey, keep your window down. Keep your window down. Keep your window down. I'm gonna get you out of the car. As a matter of fact, get out of the car. Get out of the car. Get, get out of the car. Get out of the car right now. We're not playing this game. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. What part of Donald's doing this time? Hey, Drew. Hey, Drew. I'm getting arrested, dude. I'm getting out. What the f***? When we tell you to do something, you do it. You understand? You understand? Not what you want, but what we tell you. Hold on, bro. I just had surgery on my knee. I just had surgery on my knee, bro. I just had surgery really? on my what knee, bro. I just had surgery in your ears when we go there with the window down. Chill, bro. Chill. Oof. Mm. Now, I know a lot of people watch that video, uh, hear that video, and say to themselves, I'm calling ICE on every single one of those police police officers. Okay, if ever a wall needed to be built, I'm sure they are here legally because they are all police officers. But I just want to make sure because if you're going to treat Tyreek Hill like that, then I need to make sure you don't need to be deported. Okay, that's number one. Second thing, I'm sure some of you thought, why didn't Tyreek just comply? Why didn't he just keep the window down? Why didn't he just tell the police who he was? I'm Tyreek Hill. We got a game to play today. I'm just trying to get to the stadium, you know, apologies and keep it moving. Police probably would have gave him an escort. Unless, of course, those officers were betting with the Jaguars. Unless, of course, those officers were betting on their, you know, DraftKings and their fan duels that Tyreek was going to have a horrible game. If that is the case, then they didn't want to do anything but make sure Tyreek was having a bad day. But back to the Tyreek Hill complying thing, right? I, I've heard people say he should have just complied. The reason I have trouble with that logic is because ego-driven, power-tripping humans are going to be ego-driven, power-tripping humans regardless. Nothing about this interaction was logical or had any reasoning to it. One minute. 60 seconds from pulling him over. They forcibly removed him out of the car and had him on the ground. Folks say Tyreek should have just complied. Well, what about officers should have had better conflict resolution skills? The officers reacted like that simply because Tyreek wouldn't keep his window down. You already have his license. Run his name, give him his ticket, and let him go on about his business. The officers ask Hill to get out of his vehicle. Tyreek says, I'm going to get out. Okay, as the officer is already opening his door and removing him, Tyreek says to the officer, I'm getting out. Okay, by that point, another officer grabbed him by the back of the head, back of the neck, and forced him to the pavement, put him in handcuffs. The situation went from zero to 60, but it was the police who pushed the gas. Okay, not Tyreek. And this is what I don't understand about people with big guns, fragile, fragile egos, and badges. Okay, one of the officers literally tells Tyreek, when I tell you to do something, you do it. As if Tyreek has zero rights. And what's sad when you're dealing with the police, especially when you're black, is you know the rule of law does not apply to you. Whatever constitutional law exists in regards to your interactions with the police, those are out the window. When we have interactions with the police, we just trying to survive. Mm -hmm. Tyreek Hill uh, told NBC News this. Do we got that clip? I'm just being a black man, that's it. 
I'm just being black in America, bro. What? That's we're, all it is. We're dark too, brother. We're, we're people of That's, color too. Don't play like that. That's I'm, being, I'm just being a black man in America, bro. That's not the clip nice I'm looking for. That's it. I said, let me, write me my ticket. That wasn't the clip I was looking for. The other one, when you told talking to NBC News. You don't have that one? Oh, well, he basically told NBC News, if I wasn't Tyreek Hill, Lord knows I probably would have been shot or locked up. Tyreek, let's just say these people knew who you were, mm-hmm. okay? Look what they still did to you. Okay, they don't care who you are. They would have treated any black person in that situation just like they treated you. It took them one minute, 60 seconds from pulling you over to have you on the ground in handcuffs. Okay, you being Tyreek Hill meant absolutely nothing. Now, one of the officers has been put on administrative leave and the police chief promises full transparency. Uh, Chief, we saw the video. It doesn't get any more transparent. I know there's going to be an investigation. The only thing that you can tell us is my theory about the officers betting on the Jacksonville Jaguars via DraftKings of FanDuel is true. Other than that, this is just gaslighting because nothing is going to change in regards to how cops treat us. And that's the sad part. They won't even release these officers' names. So I can't even really give them the credit they deserve for being stupid. We are at the mercy of the police. Okay. All I learned from this situation was what I already knew. Okay. It doesn't matter who you are, what you do, how much money you got. If you are black, you are subject to that type of violent, overly aggressive behavior from the police. Please let Remy Ma give the officers in Miami Dade County that did that to Tyreek Hill, the biggest hee haw. Hee haw, hee haw. You stupid motherfucker. Are you dumb? All right. Not black. You OJ. What? I mean, you know, you know, I'm trying to say. No, we don't. He's rich, (laughs) so he shouldn't be treated like that. But it doesn't matter how much money you had. Cops do not care. Mm -mm. They hopped out that car. um, They hopped off that bike. OJ didn't think he was black. That's what I'm saying. I was trying to say the line, but I said it wrong. We don't know what you was trying to say. Whatever, y'all know what I'm saying. It's sad that we even because imagine if he wasn't him, and that's why I said earlier my heart dropped when he put that window. But here's the thing. He said that right. He said if he said if I wasn't Tyreek Hill, Lord knows I probably would have been shot or locked up. It ended well. All right, well, you can play it now. A little late, but it's okay. Hill believes the incident could have ended differently if he were not a superstar athlete. Worst case scenario, would have been shot or either um, you would have been locked up. I believe that that situation went exactly how it would have went regardless because they didn't care. It took them 60 seconds. 60 seconds for all of that to happen. That was ego. <laughs> okay. That was pride. That was abuse of power. 60 seconds. They knew who he was and... and and they wanted to show him who was the boss, quote unquote, right? Well, Let's talk they, about if it. If they knew who he was and still treated him they like did. that. They did. One of the officers said that, that's Tyreek Hill. Yeah, I they don't ain't think, about to have a boss now. They, somebody about to be fired. I don't think they can. I don't know if they even, I don't even know if they're going to get fired. Yeah. They, really their don't. unions over there, union released something what? that oh, he didn't comply. That's why we, we, we yeah. did that. It's... All right, well, let's open up the phone lines. Let's discuss. 800-585-1051. Uh, we'd love to hear from you and some officers out there, some officers on the job. If you're working in, we'd love to hear wh- how you feel about it. What's your thoughts? What you think? All right, it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, Lauren LaRose is filling in for Jess. Now, if you're just joining us, Charlemagne gave Donkey the data who? Uh, the police officers in Miami Dade County who pulled over Tyree Kill on Sunday. That's right. And they were just overly aggressive and violent for no reason whatsoever. Right. So we're asking, what are your thoughts? 800 585 1051. We have T on the line. T, good morning. Good morning. Now this uh, says you're a, you're a police officer, correct? Yes, sir. And what do you, what, you ain't got to change your voice? We ain't gonna say where you're from. And uh, what's your <laughs> thoughts? What's your thoughts on what happened, bro? Uh, it was it happened. Uh, the bottom line is that he did not comply. Now the, they should have known who he was from the get go because I think he was only a block from the stadium. Uh, just let him go. But if he was not Tyreek Hill, if you're gonna get pulled over, like I tell you, tell my sons. Mm-hmm. If an officer tells you to roll the one down, you do it. You keep your hands in plain view. Tyreek rolled the one to back up. Now, all cops don't have common sense. Right. So he exploded, which was wrong. But this could have been worse, or even Tyreek could have been shot because this guy gave him an order. He did not comply. He could have panicked. 
and shot Tyreek. But people have to learn, especially black kids and black men and brown kids, if the cop tells you to do something, wrong or right, do it. Your job is to make it home. Yeah, you sound like my and dad. Under- so that's yeah, my, that and was my dad's thing. My dad's whole thing was you can't beat the police in the street. Get home, and then we 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 could you know we could figure One out. Deal with, yes, sir. And yeah. the bottom line is, my, I tell my boys the same thing. So everything was going fine. He let the window down, but when he let the window back up, that's basically saying "f you" to the cop. This guy didn't have any damn sense and did what he did, which was wrong. But the bottom line is, like you said, every comply and make it home. We'll deal with the bullshit. Later. But let me now, ask that's you why I said you... we don't have no constitutional rights. You know, when you black, it's all about survival. Like, yeah. you can't even think about no rule of law. Yeah, because I think he was very aggressive from the door. That wasn't an officer saying, hey, give me your license and registration. That officer was banging on the window. He was very aggressive from the door. He didn't seem like he was willing to even hear anything. And that's the problem. It's like, I feel like a lot of times people don't treat people like humans. And I felt like just the way that he was talking to him, he was talking to Tyreek like he was less than. Yeah. And in the body cam that you... we see, it, it wasn't even a long period of time before Tyreek pulled over so it's not like he was upset because he took him on a chase or anything like that which is still seconds. wrong right and you and you all are right but understand this they're human beings doing this job this is a very dangerous job I've had friends who have been shot because idiots rolled their window back up and shot a friend of mine through the window I get it so that's going through your head but at the same time understand when you're in the streets 50% of these cops don't have no common sense they've never dealt with black people They've never dealt in minority situations. They don't have enough sense to say, hey, Tyreek, keep it moving. Have a great game. They yeah, want to They right. take this power and abuse it. You're right. And I so tell understand you, that. And I'll tell you something else. Uh, Thank you, brother. In that moment, Tyreek Hill shouldn't think like he's Tyreek Hill. Uh, no. no Tyreek Hill should just think like I'm a regular black man who's just trying to survive an encounter with the police. That's what Tyreek's mentality is. Because the fact he was Tyreek Hill... I think made him say, I'm going to roll my window up because I can do that because I'm Tyreek Hill. But it was, it Y'all was just said I said a bunch of nothing. That's exactly what I was trying to say. No, you didn't. You was in there quoting That's what Jay-Z. I was trying Y'all to say. Jay-Z. I'm not black. I'm OJ. But to everybody that's what? saying this is Tyreek Hill, they should know who he is. None of that matters is my point. To mm-hmm. him, the attitude, did, I would never put my window up on a cop and oh, reach for a seatbelt. Are you crazy? But that's why you should speak Lang- real language and not try to speak in Twitter <laughs> Jay-Z language. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Okay. Okay. Leave me alone. Okay. Hello, 150 this? characters or less. Hey, how you doing, man? What's your name, brother? Hey, my name is Brian. I'm from Houston, Texas, man. I called in a couple of years ago about the Park USA for safer traffic stops for drivers and police officers. Okay. And this is one, another example of how my product would have made the situation a whole lot better. Oh, I Sometimes. remember you. You're the oh, one that yeah. got the license that can hang out the window? Yep. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm gonna sir, tell you. Yes, I'm gonna tell you why you're wrong in this situation. Tyreek already had handed the officer okay. his license. I don't even remember seeing that. Yeah, he gave him his so, license. So he gave him this license. Product, the, the information would have been outside his vehicle before the police officer even approached the vehicle. Yeah, but that's but still. They, they but they, but they, but they still them. wanted his window down because, because his window was so tinted, dark. Yeah, because yeah. window was tinted. They want to see you. They want to see your hands. They want to see what you're Correct. doing in the car. And I feel like his energy of like, just give me my ticket. That's that pissed them off. Like they, I, were, they were pissed off from the door. Yeah. They didn't seem like they were. They, they, they were nice. They seemed like they were very <laughs> aggressive and upset. Hello, who's this? Hello. Hello. Hey, what's your name? Yeah, this is Timmy Two. What's up, brother? What's your thoughts? Hello. All right. My thoughts is this. I want to spin the table back just for a second. Athletes and politicians can't be held to a higher standard because they are who they are. I agree. I yep. think let's, let's let's drop the fact that he's Tyreek Hill. Let's drop the fact that he's in a sport car and put him in a Honda Civic. Let's drop the fact that he's black. He was late going to a game. That's like somebody late going to work. Mm-hmm. Hypothetically, if he had hit somebody, then we'd be speaking, oh, he shouldn't have been speeding, right? Correct. Well, Tyreek Hill. Hello? His phone cut off. Yeah, his phone broke. Sir? I don't know where he was going with this, but it sounded like he was about to do a whole lot of victim blaming. Yeah, that definitely seems like that. <laughs> but we'll take your calls. 800-585-1051. And Tyreek, he might have been he might have been rushing to, to, to get to the game. He might have been speeding, but the whole thing is you still treat people like human beings. That's all it really if, boils if, down to. I don't to. care if you pull somebody over for, for speeding, for running a red light, or, or, or rolling through a stop sign. You still treat people with respect. And, and when you don't, what, what do you expect and, people and, to do? And by the way, vice versa. 
It needs to be respect from the police officers. Correct. And when you black, you got to have respect for the police, too. Correct. I, it just is what it is. Are Correct. We can sit around and talk about what's legally right and what our constitutional rights are. Man, when we have interactions with the police, we just trying to survive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, like like the officer said, the officer said early, it, it, it is a thing, right? Because I used to get pulled over all the time in New York City. And, and usually because I had a, a nice car and they would always pull me over. And I always used to be a great. I used to give the energy they gave me. I used to give it back all the time. You're crazy. Because I never did anything wrong. I'm yeah. like. Like, I have matter. my license, I have my insurance, I have matters. my registration, everything is good. Why are you pulling me yeah, over? They was working no with them people, man. Okay. They was pulling them over okay. to talk. No, <laughs> that, was, that was an act that you just pulled off people. That was an act. That was an act. Act like we hate each other. Act like we hate each other. Pass me the wire. Okay. Pass me the wire. They brought new batteries for the wire. Let me hear pop this in. That's what that was. All right, sorry. I'm not OJ over there. All right. 800-585-1051. Did you see the Tyreek Hill video? What were your thoughts? Let's discuss. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. If y'all talking about it, you know we talking about it. It's Topic Time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV. Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy, we are The Breakfast Club. Lauren LaRosa is filling in for Jess. If you're just joining us, Charlemagne gave Donkey the day to who? Uh, the Miami-Dade police officers who pulled over Tyreek Hill on Sunday as he was approaching the Hard Rock Stadium to play a game against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, we're asking, you know, if you've seen the video, what are your thoughts? Hello, who's this? Yo, good morning, Breakfast Club. This is Swag. Man, I just want to call about this topic this morning. Uh, Talk to us. I just wanted to say, I think that's a case of two egos getting in the way, man. After watching the video, after listening to the video, I just feel like those things can be better, uh, expressed effectively with effective communication. But in my, it, the way I look at it, that was just two egos just tripping, and that could have went really bad. So I think the world could take a, a, a note from that and realize that sometimes we got to put our egos to the side, man. That is true. Mm -hmm. I mean, the reality Thank of the you. situation is, you know, there is an ego on both sides, right? Because I, I don't think Tyreek Hill acts like that if he's not Tyreek Hill. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A block away from his stadium. And the police were definitely ego tripping. And definitely to abusing oh, he even went to jail. If, if he wasn't a, a football player, like he would have definitely went to jail. It would have been a lot worse. It would have definitely been a lot worse. Hello, who's this? This is Destiny calling from Duval. Destiny from Duval. What's your thoughts, mama? She was she was Tyreek would have went to jail, so they could have won on Saturday. Damn. Sunday. You no, know, Charlamagne, I agree with you. Some people was wrong, and I feel like even if he would have complied with them, they still would have had a reason That's to right. treat him how they treat him. That man told him that they had knee surgery, and they still proceeded to rush him on the ground and didn't try to resolve the issue. They that, wanted problems with that man. That was another thing that was fouled, right? Because one of the officers knew who he was, right? Said his name. And that man said, yo, I just had knee surgery. And they threw him on the and floor, on aggressively that, pulled him down. Man. Because they bet on Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. They bet on Jacksonville on fan well, duels and well, DraftKings. Them police. We took, the, we took the L, and that's okay. But they were absolutely wrong, and they need to be fired. Uh, thank you, Mama. And then they, they they said, get out the car. He said, all right, I'm getting out. They opened the door and pulled him out. Yeah, and they told him he was going to bust that I'm window. I'm tell you something. Put that window up. I would have called ice on every single one of the police officers because if I was Tyreek <laughs> Hill, can. I wouldn't have thought they was police. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not saying that you know uh, they no, you they, they can't be police, but <laughs> all of them, every single one of them, <laughs> every single one of them, well, ain't, no ain't, ain't no black officer, ain't no white officer. officer. Uh, no, no, no. I'm calling the police. You don't want to see. I'm calling ICE. You call the you call real police. You don't want to see minority police because they ain't real. I don't know. I'm just saying. In that moment, I would have thought I was something is wrong. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's going on here, man? <laughs> this is set up. Somebody call ICE, please. I just want to. I'm sure they're here legally. You were I just want to make sure. You would have thought she was getting robbed. Was what you trying to say? Yes. I just want to make sure. And, and somebody on, on one of the chats said, you know, it's crazy. You know, police are usually there. His name is Conrad uh, Higgins. He says one job for a police officer is to de-escalate situations, right? Calm things down. And in that whole situation, there was no de-escalation. No, that was straight. They set it off escalate, from the rip. Straight. Yes. I want to box. I want to fight. But that's why, like, you, you barely. It's important to know the amount smoke. of time, like Charlemagne said, of when they actually pulled him out the car because normally seconds. police are that upset when you when you make cops run, they upset. He Pri he pulled over. Priceless eight three seven eight three one one said they look like the cartel coming in there. Black bodies in this country just get treated differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. Even by uh, people who are supposed to be brown. Like, if those people didn't have on police uniforms, they didn't have uniforms on, they'd get treated just like they was trying to treat Tyreek Hill. Right. 
and and would still get treated like that. Yeah. Because I'm thinking about calling on ICE on all of them right now just to make sure. All of them just to make sure. That they're here legally. Just to make sure. It's crazy. You know, I... <sighs> I've seen officers treat people who have done crimes, who they stop for doing crimes, way better than that. Like, way better than that for somebody for uh, uh, speeding or aggressive driving or whatever he was pulled over for. Right. Which we still don't know what he was pulled over for, right? No, they said speed. They said he wasn't wearing a seatbelt. and uh, He couldn't they see the seatbelt through the tent, so that was a lie. Reckless he, danger. When, and then beginning the body cam, you hear him say mention something about speed. And then there was speed reports of, like, it, it's been all over. There's nothing been, the, the the department hasn't confirmed exactly, but they there's been different things released. But it's a traffic violation. It's yeah, they moving, gave him tickets. It's a moving traffic violation, regardless of the fact. Mm-hmm. So it shouldn't yeah. have gotten to this point. All right. Well, what's the moral of the story, guys? FanDuel got 24 hours to respond. Jesus Christ. What? <laughs> we need to know. What's going on? You was drinking last night. You were yes, out? speeding and reckless driving. Last night. Why did, what, does, what do you mean FanDuel has 25 hours to respond? Because we want to know. Like, is it is it the best? Like, what's the reason I for all Lauren of this? this morning. What's Lauren, the reason what for doing? all of this? What you doing? I'm over here reading court docs. What you doing, Lauren? I'm chilling. What you, what's going on? All right. Well, we have Jess with the Long LaRosa coming we up. We do talk have Jess. No, I don't want to <laughs> talk to you. <laughs> First of all, when I said the OJ thing, y'all thought I was crazy. And now, y'all like, oh. No, he said, oh, I still think you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not talking to you. We're going to talk about Harvey Weinstein and Tyrese. Tyrese is also um, in some legal trouble. All right, we'll get to that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Lauren LaRosa's filling in for Jess. And let's get to Jess with the Mess with Lauren LaRosa. News is real, weather is real. Hilarious, Jessica Robin Moore. Jess don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't spare nobody. She don't spare nobody. Worldwide, Jess. Worldwide, Mess. On The Breakfast Club. She's a culture show. With Lauren. Lauren LaRosa. I'm back. And I got the mess. Talk, mess. talk to me. Harvey Weinstein, who has been sitting in jail for a while because, as you guys know, he was accused of sexual misconduct with over 80 women, was rushed to the hospital. He rushed to uh, Bellevue Hospital in New York from Rikers. Um, and this is days before he's supposed to be in court. He's supposed to be in court this Thursday. Um, and according to his rep more recently, he is not doing great. So he is undergoing a major heart surgery. Um, and as of right now, the court the court case that he's supposed to show up to on Thursday is still set, and he is still set to be there unless he isn't feeling well, uh, well enough to make it there. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I was gonna say hopefully he makes it through, but honestly, like, mm, moving on. Mm-hmm. Tory Lane. So Tory, it's a lot of prison in this. <laughs> it's a lot of prison. <laughs> a lot of prison, a lot in, this of prison in this next one. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Tory Lanez, uh, y- y'all know he put out the prison tapes. Yep. So, um, he, he was releasing music from jail and basically the j- the uh, from prison. The prison confiscated all of his studio equipment. So, um, after that, after all of that music was released, uh, the rapper, Tory Lanez, his attorney, tells TMZ and different other, other people. So, this was online. This was on Twitter first. It broke on a lot of like the academics pages and then TMZ picked it up as well too. Mm-hmm. But they were, they, they were told that his cell block was raided and everything was conf- confiscated. Um, and that he is currently, um, dang, I'm having word salad now because y'all done mixed me up earlier. Word salad. Yes. It's when you mix up your words. Okay. And I've heard word salad. Okay. Yes, we have. So, he's in a California, uh, correctional institution. And basically what they're saying is that, um, he's been passing the days by by making music and he dropped a couple songs. However, um, they're saying that they told Tori's team that inmates are strictly forbidden to have any recording devices for various reasons. Now, the team, Tori's team, is waiting to learn if Tori is going to face any other consequences because of this, like any other charges or mm-hmm. anything like that. But right now, it just it looks like, you know, fans are going to have to do with the songs that he was already able to put out because they're not giving him this equipment equipment back Mm -hmm. now my thing with this is like studio equipment is not just something you can put under your arm and walk through a metal detector with so Mm -hmm. how was it even how did it even get to him if they're saying that he is not allowed to have it well what is studio equipment though i mean you know tim say she recorded free minds on a but even, laptop. If, but even if they had a laptop, you can't put a, a laptop in your butt and, more, and, and sneak it in. Whatever it is. You don't know is. how big that man's butt is. <laughs> you I don't know. Know. First of all, first of all, what? you do not know how big that man's butt is. So you don't even know. Why would There's you? There's no butt that could fit a laptop. You don't know that. You seen some laptop butts? I don't know. But I'm just saying. To, I don't know. I'm not going to just assume this man can't fit a laptop in his butt. To my, to my understanding, they know he was. they knew he was recording. 
And then something changed recently, and they said that Tory Lanez will be releasing a statement today about what changed and the reason why it was confiscated. And what kind of record? Gotcha. How do we? You, you saying it's a laptop? We don't know what kind of recording device. We, we it was. don't. We don't know. All we know is that the studio device equipment. is big. We all. We only thing we know is that it's studio. Y'all are <laughs> ah, like. <laughs> you saw how you did his God. hands. <laughs> Do it again. First, it was the what was the dance you did earlier? Let me see. Oh my that, goodness! Let me Google. It still got to be big. It got to be the size of a, a water bottle. You're not putting it. You know what? Forget it. Size of a water bottle. That's actually pretty small for a studio. Equipment. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them what you can hide and where your place is at. All no, right. No, no, no. Not my places. Oh, I'm no, little. Not no, my places. Now nah, I just googled recording devices for music that can fit in your butt, and there's some things on here that look like they can fit in your butt. I'm not gonna lie. The Allo Compact Audio Recorder. You really put that could fit in your butt? The Roni 72. GB digital voice activated recorder recorder. Uh, okay, now listen. Mini voice recorder. What about the mic? Where, where, where can you put the mic? Hey. I think this is all the mic. Hey. This is all the You know what? Forget it. Y'all don't take me serious. Even if you did fit all that stuff in anywhere you had to put it, what, Look, you're going to hear him recording. Lauren, what did that say? It says DJ Envy spotted at no, Tory Lane's no. correctional <laughs> facility stupid, with a man. computer in the butt. <laughs> What's it wrong with you, man? No, they have, a, they have something called butt kicker music product. Butt Yo. kicker music product. <laughs> Uh -uh, I'm not we, lying. Go to thebuttkicker.com. Am I making it? Look, you better not what? go to no butt kicker. Doesn't yeah, your cache on your computer take you to things that are similar to what you normally visit and search? Yes. You went to. You ended up on what? What website? The All butt right. kicker. Buttkickermusicproducts.com. Uh, okay. All right, let's go to Tyrese. All right. Yeah. So, no. Oh. Okay. Damn, you just want to switch butts, then. <laughs> yeah, you're a wild boy, man. <laughs> so yesterday, um, yesterday Tyrese uh, was found in contempt of court. He's still going back and forth in court uh, over his divorce and the child support stuff. Not over the divorce; it's, it's more so the child support stuff now. So this is what. <laughs> What? Uh, hold on, just real quick. I asked ChatGBT. I said, <laughs> Yo, are there you? recording devices that can fit in your butt? <laughs> yes, there are small recording devices, including <laughs> miniature microphones and cameras that are designed to be extremely compact. However, inserting such devices into the body, including in the rectum, could pose serious health risk and is not recommended. So... <laughs> there are recording devices that can fit in your Chat butt. GPT You know numbers. what I think? Because, you know, like, I think that we should do some market studies. You get to that, and then you let me know. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dang, we can't even do Tyrese? Yes, do you it. can. Go ahead. Okay, so Tyrese, <laughs> Fulton County Superior <laughs> Court. He was held in uh, contempt of court yesterday because the judge is saying that he has not been paying child support. He was ordered to pay 10 k a month um, in child support, um, and he has been paying something. He's been paying way less than that. I think it's like $2,200. Yep. Um, so there was a 73 thousand dollar balance that they're saying that he had and they wanted him to pay it then and there he was not doing so um so he was arrested now when he was taken into custody his attorney then filed an appeal then and this is something that they did way back when when he was ordered to pay like over 600 some thousand dollars mm -hmm. so they filed an appeal when you file that appeal it doesn't get rid of the money that you owe but mm -hmm. it basically stays so it's, it's like delayed until y'all figure out what's going to happen with the appeal and his team is basically appealing this because they're saying number one basically he shouldn't be responsible for a lot of the legal fees for his ex-wife uh, they're saying that the retroactive money that he had to pay in child support is basically aggressive um, because he had been active supporting his daughter during the divorce and while they were in court um, and they're also saying that oh that's it I got it they is he out? out yeah he He's is out, out. He's really, okay. so he didn't yeah. have to pay because yesterday said he paid did he have to pay no 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 because they filed the appeal he didn't have to pay yesterday okay. but that doesn't mean that he might not have to pay it it just means while the appeal is there the judge like they have to see if the appeal is going to go forward they have to hear it and then they'll decide either he's going to pay less or they're going to say no you still got to pay this well I'm just glad Tyrese has been rescued because I need him out in time for my mental <laughs> health expo on October 12th at Marriott Marquis Times Square I hate you it is a day of mental health education and healing it's from 11am to 4pm you can go to mentalhealthexpo.com for more details Tyrese will be there uh -huh. okay He's been rescued. Speaking of me mental health and, and healing and rescue. That list, that's right. You, you're an evil person. Why is that evil? Can we, can we play it? He said yesterday it was a traumatic experience. Wait, 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 wait. Why is that evil? Record. You said what? I think you should play a Tyrese record. Oh, okay. I think you should play what, a Tyrese record? record either. Because I'm going to tell y'all something about Tyrese. Y'all can look at Tyrese's shenanigans mm -hmm. and his antics, <laughs> and you forget sometimes how talented he is. Y'all need to listen to that beautiful pain album. Mm -hmm. That beautiful paint album is when he said that the sixties inspired it. Yeah. It is really nineteen sixty nine. Oh, that's great. Thank you for the intro. What's the record you want to hear, Charlemagne? I think we should play Rescue. Rescue is a record that was uh Jesus. Well, would made, you look at that? He made for his new girlfriend. And I think it's a phenomenal tune. Could you imagine being Tyrese's bunkie? <laughs> 
No, do y'all see this caption he posted? He posted a video saying he was going to jail. Look at this caption. I can't imagine being his bunkie. Chat GPT Look at this wrote caption. that. Y'all, Listen, let's play let's, Tyrese we gotta Rescue, wrap up. Let's get into Rescue. We got to wrap up. And then we'll get y'all to, gonna get to, me the, to the mix. Mm -hmm. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Lauren Rosa filling in for Jess. And we got to salute Tim's for joining us this morning. Born in the Wild. Her album is out now. I am a, a, a huge Tim's fan. I like Tim's music a whole lot, man. She's very, 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 very dope. And uh, I can't wait to check her out on tour. That's right. I wish I would have went to go see her in New York. But that'll be a good date weekend. Mm -hmm. Fly out to go see Tim's. I might go see her in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well, I'm not right. going on a date, but I'm going to go see Tim. Han, speak up. Say it with your chest. <laughs> she said she's going to go by herself. I said I'm not going on a date, on a date but I'm going to go see my girl Tim. You're not going on a date? I'm going to go with my homegirls Damn. if they can leave their boyfriend. You're not going Damn. on a date because Delaware girls always want to tighten their Tim's. What would you say? She said she's going to hope that one of her girls can leave her man for a little bit and go on a, a ladies' date with her. Oh, okay. I got like 1.5 of a single friend. Yeah. All of Lauren's <laughs> friends that got men cut her loose completely. Dang. Okay, all right. It's you got to be around people who, who are who you equally yoked with. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Don't have your single. I'm about to yoke. <laughs> up. Like stop playing with me. You, know, you don't want to be around your that single Yo. energy. You know Damn what I mean? See, these are the conversations me and my homegirls be having, though. And we be having these on the Brown Girl Grind on Instagram, too, because I do believe that you do got to be careful about your situation and protect it. Okay. But single friends can hang out with non-single friends, too. No. You just have to respect your friends' relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm. So if Follow that was Brown the case, grinding. you shouldn't have no friends. So all your friends have somebody, and you not you're... all of them. I have some. I got like one point five of a single friend. Damn. Like she in it, but like not ish. Oh, she in it, but you don't want her being it because you still want to hang out with her. No, it's like you know she's you... newly getting out back outside. It's time to get up out of here. You got a positive note, Charlotte Mike? I do. I want to tell people too, man. Make sure you uh, go to mentalwealthexpo dot com for more details on my fourth annual Mental Wealth Expo, which is happening October 12th at the Marriott Marquis Times Square here in New York City. Uh, so many great psychiatrists and therapists will be there from uh, Dr. Alfie Breland Noble to Dr. Rita Walker to uh, Dr. Jay Barnett to Dr. Bryant. Uh, Tyrese will be there in conversation with my man Jason Wilson, just having a great conversation about, you know, why it's okay for men to release uh, via tears. Um, Debbie Brown is going to be there. Uh, and Angela Rye is going to be there. Jay Bar I think I said Jay Barnett. My man Elliot Connie. Just a whole host of, uh, you know, great therapists, psychiatrists, spiritual leaders, you know, just mental wealth experts, man. So go to mentalwealthexpo.com. The event is free. Free, 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 free from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Marriott Marquis Times Square. All ages are welcome. I'll see you there. Okay, now the positive note is this. It comes from my man, John Wooden. I love this quote. Success is peace of mind, which is a direct result of self-satisfaction in knowing you did your best to become the best you are capable of becoming. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?